the Second World War saw the creation of a new type of fighting man, the commander. Not just a tough guy, but a sapper, signaler, marksman, parachutist, scout, seaborne raider, a specialist in modern warfare. The evolution of such a versatile fighting man called for a new type of training. The keynote of this commando training was realism. Stand by beach defensive. Rapid. Fire. So you're going to be a commando, are you? Training's a bit tough, isn't it? Oh, I've done much about it yet. I've only just volunteered. I don't start training till tomorrow. What made an old hand like you sign on for the Green Berries, anyway? Haven't you had enough action? That's what I keep asking him. Now you can shut up, Stippy Potter. I'll push your face in. Blimey, I'm going. Here you are, sir. Thank you, sir. Good day, sir. Hand the next skin, please. Yes, sir? Shave, please. Not too close. I suppose it's the thickier stuff. The glamour and all that that appeals to you. Oh, my God. You too. Keep still, can't you? Well, it makes me mad. I've been trying to drive into my mate's thick head that the commandos are not a lot of fancy bruisers. Well, what are they, then? Specialists, my son. Specialists. Highly trained amphibious soldiers. See? Don't you mean triphibious, like Churchill says here? What about the Marines? What are we supposed to be, then? You tell me. What do you think we've been doing since D-Day? Playing snakes and ladders? Oh, cut it out, Steffi. I'm not knocking the Marines. Much? And I've been over the other side since D plus 10. But in the commandos, you get special training and so on. So does everybody these days. Assault courses and all that sort of lot. Yes, I know. But it's also much bigger and better in the commandos. And it's... Oh, hell, I wish I could make you blokes understand. Well, we didn't have any commandos in 1914. And I was just a plain sapper, no frills at all. But from what I read in the papers, I think I can understand what our young friend's driving at. That's more than I do. Me too. He's been trying to get me to volunteer for the Green Bears, but I still don't know why. My impression is that the modern soldier is part of a complex fighting machine, but the commando is trained to be a single individual. Am I right, sir? That's it. That's what I've been trying to say. Well, I... Uh... You see, his sort of job calls for selected and highly trained men who can work and fight in small parties, or even alone, and act and think for themselves. Correct, sir? You've hit the nail right smack on the jolly old napper, Professor. That's what I've been trying to tell that dope, but he's so dumb. You mean you can't talk plain English? All I could get out of him was, why should I start chaining all over again after being three years in the Marines? And all that sort of bull. But he seems a bit daft to me. A bloke like yourself, fully trained, have plenty of action, and wants to start training all over again. But it's not all over again, you sloppy git. It's something new, something different. Another rocket. The next one's on the house, as the barmaid said. There they go, killing women and kids again. Now do you see what I'm getting at? I want to do something to finish off this lousy, rotten business. Sure, Gordon, I know. But Jerry and his rockets will have had it by the time you're a full-blown commando. 
Yes, but it's not just Jerry. It's not just rockets. It goes a lot further than that. What is driving that is that war has become so terrible that it's up to every fighting man to train like the devil so that he can protect us against all the super rockets or maybe even more devilish things should another war come along. That'll be one and six. So what finer job can a man do than to train to be a soldier of the future? But that's what a commando is. At least that's the way I see it. Spoken like a man. You ought to be in Parliament. Thank you, sir. Next gent, please. Here you are, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good day, sir. Good day. Uh, next gent, please. Well, Steffi, you old half and half. I hope you're beginning to see daylight. Maybe. Anyway, drop me a line while you're training and let me know what it's like. You bet. And I'll lay you 50 to 1 you'll be following me before long. Well, we'll see. Ah, boy. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Sergeant Major, can you direct me to the commando camp, please? Go straight up the road until you come to the first set of traffic lights. Turn left, come to another set of traffic lights, turn right, go straight up the hill and carry on. You can't miss it, OK? All right, go. Dear Steffi, well, here I am at Wrexham. This is the place where they start to turn ordinary blokes like you and me into real commandos. Blimey, you should see the parades in the morning. Blokes from every blinking regiment under the sun. You ought to see the different tippers and badges in our mob. Guards, Gloucesters, Medicos, Fusiliers, Gunners, Sappers, Scotties, even tank boys. And that's not all, not by a long chalk. Of course, we aren't half a lot of odds and sods at the moment, but we're all volunteers, so there ought to be some good types knocking around. Those who aren't will soon get the order of the boot. Take it from me, we've got some hard graft ahead of us before we're wearing green commando berries like the old hands they've got here. I wish you could get an eyeful of these blokes. You should see them, Steffi. What the hell's stopping you anyway? They've got a special map with welcome on it for Marines. That's all I've got to say about commandos. It's entirely in your hands. It's up to you. If you want to have a really good crack at the enemy, then here's your chance. Also, it is your opportunity to become a first-class British fighting soldier, because that's exactly what a commando is. Now, if you're in earnest, we want you, and we want you badly. We'll welcome you, we'll train you well, and we'll look after you. If, on the other hand, you're searching for some form of cheap glamour, then forget it, because we don't want you. Now, those of you who want a volunteer must report to the MI room tomorrow morning at 0900 hours. 
you've got to be in absolutely tip-top condition to qualify. Those of you who are medically fit, I will interview in room 26 immediately afterwards. Now remember what I've told you. Think it over. Cough. <coughs> Louder. Good morning, Potter. Oh. Sit down, please. So you want to join the commandos, Potter? Yes, sir. How old are you? Twenty-six, sir. And you've been in the Royal Marines for three years? That's right, sir. I see you've got a clean record and your first class shot with a rifle. What other weapons are you proficient in? I've had quite a bit of time on infection machine gun. Dear Gordon, you will see from my address that I've been and gone and done it. And I'm now at the commando training unit for Marines at Towin Wells. You must have... Hey, Lofty! How do you spell hypnotized? H-I-P-T-O-N-Y-Z-D. Thanks, pal. Anyway, how goes it with you? Dear twerp, all's well with me. So I finally made up your mind for you, did I? You're not so dumb as I thought you were. Well, I'm up in Scotland now, at the camp where we really get down to brass tacks. But they didn't half smarten us up during our three weeks at Wrexham. You should have seen our final passing out parade. What a difference to the first one. Talk about smart, clockwork wasn't in it. On the right foot, arms swinging. The apple of the salt may desire, that's me. Even though he didn't say so. Well, then we sat in a train for bleeding hours, and at last we finished up at a small place in the Western Highlands. Blung me if we didn't start training as soon as we got there. No getting out onto the platform. That's too civilised. They made us get out on the wrong side and scramble across the lines. Actually, I didn't mind the exercise after being stuck in that carriage for so long. Did I say we started training at once? Boy, I'll say we did. It's seven miles to the camp from the station, up hill and down dale, and they forgot to order me a taxi. But the scenery hit us right in the eye, all the way to the camp. Hills, rivers, mountains. Bonnie, Scotland. It's a hell of a place, Steppy, and I think even you will fall for it when it's your turn to come up here. Well, the seven miles soon went by and we marched into Aknacarry Camp. It's a bit of a shocker, that name, if you don't happen to be Scott. But not half as much a shocker as the pretty little sideshow they've got right inside the camp gates. Graves, Steffi. A whole perishing row of them. Laid out to warn the new chaps not to be sort of careless-like. I don't know if they're real or not, but blimey, they didn't half shake me. What a reception. Next day we got cracking in real earnest. Well, Steffi, you know I've never been crazy about PT. But they do it kind of different here. And well, believe me or believe me not, I actually began to enjoy it. All the officers go through the mill too. Same course as us. That's what I like about this place. No favouritism, no chairborne types. The 
Sergeant Major who takes the ground on this lot would put the monkeys to shame. He'd make quids in the circus. Talk about strength through joy. I'm a new man already. A few more days like this and I'll have to give the hairs on my chest a permanent wave. Both of them. They've got a sort of glorified trapeze act here that teaches you how to hike for miles without touching the ground. It's called the Tarzan course. But believe me, we've got old Tarzan beat at his own game. Scrambling up ropes and trees, hopping from branch to branch, swinging all over the place like a lot of ruddy acrobats. Cool, with a face like yours, you'd certainly be at home here. Old Stinger, <coughs> Sergeant Major that is, tells us that the official object of this course is to conquer the aura of ice, give us a sense of balance and build the body beautiful. Well, I don't know about all that, but the fact is that it's a bit of all right. In other words, it's sort of different. They've got God knows how many different ways of getting across a river without having to take your boots off. It's a bit like hard work at first, but you soon get the hang of it. Hang is right. This is also where you start to get the lone wolf idea. How to be a one-man army, in fact. As I told you before, Steffi, the officers also go through the mill, and they always do their damnedest to get round the assault course quicker than we do. They've got a good crack here. If the officers can do it, I can do it. If the officers can do it. It's no pushover, I can tell you, but they muck in. Talking about muck, the stuff they've got here puts good old South End right in the shade, for quantity and quality. It rains here too, twice every five minutes. Combat is one of the big things up here. How to tackle a bloke with your bare hands. Knock him out, spoil his prospects and pinch his weapon. And his gold watch too if he's got one. We're not unarmed all the time, oh no. Part of our training is a pretty thorough do with small arms. We've got a bit of real Hollywood jungle here where we potted targets with rifles and tommy guns. It's a bit phony, 
but it gives you a good idea of what it might be like in a real jungle. But they don't stop at teaching us about our own weapons. You never know when you might win a rifle or a gun from the other blokes. So we learn how to use them, just in case. The instructor's got a rare old collection of enemy weapons. Some of them have got terrific names, like Spandor, Schmeiser and Manlicker. What language? We don't only just look at them, but actually handle and fire them. Might come in handy one day. Anybody see a silly conscious fusilier named Blake in here? Oh, steppy old stranger. Where did you spring from? The fairies brought me. Say, you're not looking so bad. You're looking so dusty yourself. Finished the towing? Yep. And now I'm here at Atna Carry ready for the worst. How are you making out? Nearly finished here. Last but one speed march tomorrow, then I'm practically all set for a green berry. The same sort of speed march we did at towing. Oh, I don't know about that. The ones we do up here is a pleasant country jaunt of anything up to 15 miles. One I'm doing tomorrow is a seven miler. And in full fighting kit. Three and a half miles out, three and a half miles back, and no loitering. Yes, it's a real tough hike, Sniffy, and we finish up marching at attention without a single hair out of place. Well, hardly. But that's not all. We don't stagger indoors and curl up with a good book. No, sir. We have to go straight up the side of a blooming great mountain and start potting at targets. Anyway, I've made the grade now. Full-blown commando, that's me. Yes, I'm all lined up for a green berry.
Dear Gordon, I got quite a good view of you flat-footing it to the station. If you weren't so top-heavy, you might be able to march better. I'll have to give you a couple of lessons when I get to Wrexham. Judy called, and I had to get cracking, learning how to build myself a cosy little nest out of a handful of twigs. We go out in pairs in a bivvy aerial, and spend two or three nights in the open. We sling a bivvy up between us out of what there is lying around, get the old fire going, and cook our own grub. As you know, they're very hot on that me and my pal training in this place, and I've got a very good mate on this job, a bloke named Augustus, but I call him Muggsy for short. We spent quite a bit of time in the demonstration bivvy aerial. Every kind of shelter and how it's slung together. Blimey, the things they think of. And what about the field fires? I know what to do the next time they cut off the gas. Cookery. Now that's my cup of tea. This is where I really got interested. Next time I'm out in the sticks, I know how to live like a lord on wild animals, stray fish, and anything else that's going. Perhaps you didn't know, but there's a difference between Welsh and Scotch rabbit. I wish they'd dish out some samples. Gave me quite an appetite, it did. This afternoon, a cocky matlow tried to teach us bends and hitches. In other words, landlubber, how to tie knots. Anyway, we said knots to you, and he said knots to us, and that was that. Then I went back to sea, up the Marines. Well, it wasn't the sea exactly, but the old lot was just as cold. And the rain didn't just fall down, it was slung down. They ought to have turned it into a bathing parade. Well, we had a grand time, training with cutters and all types of craft. All we were short of was a pleasure steamer or a Venetian gondola. <laughs> Of course, it was a bit of a letdown for an old hand like me to go back to embarking and disembarking from a salt craft. But I suppose it had to be done for blokes like yourself, miserable land lovers, just like the knots and the rest of the Nordic and knickknacks. more to it than getting on and getting off, because it developed into a slap off assault landing exercise.
call this establishing a bridgehead? Well, I've got another name for it, and it rhymes with muddy. I got a real kick out of the field craft lessons. All that stalking and creeping and crawling took me back to my school days. Used to be a high-class rabbit poacher, I did. Last night we had a taste of the real thing, and how. I was in a raiding party which had to land against heavy opposition. And when I say heavy opposition, I ain't kidding. Although I've been in action myself and know what the real thing is. No sissy stuff, but real bullets, real bombs and real explosions. Battle training with the lid off. Back at Wrexham again, and the old dump hasn't changed a bit. But there's much more to it than I noticed the first time. Now we're doing a lot of specialised stuff, like sniping, and I'm getting such a dab at camouflage that I could teach the invisible man a thing or two. Some of the merchants here go in for heavy weapons, and you ought to see their machine gun teams on the job. see them right on top. Then there's the boys with the mortars. 
They learn to scramble out of their jeeps, set up and fire rapid before you can say, shoot, father, I'm not afraid. Well, it's almost as quick as that. Other blokes go in for signals. They get their training with pucker signalers from the Army and the Marines. They always seem to be messing about with field telephone exchanges and gadgets by the million. And they lay so much wire all over the place that you can't walk anywhere without breaking your bloody neck. Now they're trying to make a sailor out of me. I'll soon be a better marine than you are, Gunga Din. Of course, I've already done the boating stuff at Acton Curry, but this is different. Here we use collapsible assault boats and learn how to get across rivers with tricky currents. Another river picnic, but I don't take part in it, is building bridges, which the sappers have turned into a fine art. No ruddy great steel girders and chunks of concrete for them. They make their bridges out of what's handy, and you'd be surprised how solid they are. The bridges, I mean. What a weight they can carry. Next time I want to cross a river without getting my feet wet, I'll know who to send for. Then there's clearing mines, which is something you've probably never done before. Being a Marine, you've been up against a different kind, with knobs on, I presume. But me, I'm used to the other sort, with the booby traps. You know, step on it, kid, and you've had it. Of course, the commando sappers go in for loud bangs in a much bigger way than the rest of us. They had quite a party the other day with a nice thick concrete building that nobody wanted anymore. Sometimes I feel sorry I didn't follow their trade when I see them setting out to put pay to something really big. This is only training, but they don't half do it realistic. Bangalore torpedoes, bullets, high explosive, everything was live. And so was I, but only because I kept well out of the way.
Well, you've caught up with me at last, Steffi. Well, how did you like that in the carry? Oh, it wasn't too bad, you know, but it rained enough to float the ruddy armada. Funny Scotland. Oh, blow me. Who's that running to my country? Oh, pay no attention to him, Mac. He's only a poor wee Sassanac. So you're a full-blown commando, eh? What do you think this is? A bowler hat? Funny word, commando. Can mean one bloke, a crowd of blokes, or the whole blooming issue. I wonder what it really means. Can anybody oblige the professor with a dictionary? Thanks, pal. What I call service. They did teach you to read it, Rodin, didn't they? Blimey. Listen to this, chaps. Commando. A term used during the Boer War. A body of armed burghers. Blimey, nobody can call me that and get away with it. That's an insult. Forget it, mate. The bloke who wrote this dictionary can't even spell. Pay attention, men. Uh-oh. Visit from royalty. This is Marine Harvey, who will be with you from now on. Widow Kipchum. The spare bed over there. Oh, good enough. He's just rejoined us before going back to his commander in number four brigade. So I expect you'll be interested to know what he has to tell you about your future unit. Where are they now? Which commander's been for brigade? They're at Walker, aren't they? Is it right what they say about Luther? Oh, oh, shut you would think of that. Job. You would think of that. <coughs> Are those boots issued? They're rubber soles, aren't they? Yes, they're what we call SVs. Do you want to come creeping about in? What interests me right now is, what goes on down at St Ives? I'm due to go there next week. Have you ever been there? St Ives? Yes, I've been down there. It's a regular picture of a place, and the first time you see it, you'd never think there was anything military there. But if you look closer at the variety of craft in the harbour, you'll see some which are used by us all over the world. Each craft serves its own particular purpose, although they are all intended for small raids and patrols on enemy coastlines, or for crossing rivers. We train on all of them and learn navigation, maintenance and general boat work. In fact, the works. St. Ives is a paradise for signalers, too. All the latest equipment to play with. Things you never knew existed. For instance, I don't suppose you've ever heard of their homing gadget called the S-Phone. It helps you get back to your parents' ship in the dark. It's shown me the way to go home more than once. Another clever gadget they got there is a floating cable. Strong as a rope, and you can talk quite clearly through it over any distance. But apart from signals, everyone has a high old time on the rocks, learning how to climb, how to help each other and get confidence and a sense of balance. It's done by easy stages, Simple stuff at first, but getting tougher as you go along. Teamwork is the secret of it all. At times, a commando may be called upon to act alone, but the me and my pal idea is always there in the background. You work together on the rocks, getting better every day. Mind you, it's the sort of work where you've had it if you make a slip. You eventually learn that there's absolutely no obstacle that you can't get over once you know how. When you've got the general idea and think you know all about it, you'll put on a rock climbing assault in full fighting kit, which shows you how much you really do know. It's tougher this way, but it's good training for the real thing.
Landing on a rocky coast is another tricky business that you've got to learn. This is where a lot of your earlier training at Wrexham and Acne Carry comes in handy, like the boat handling and all that. Then you come to the assault proper. Up goes the first advance party. They're pretty good by now. And then the whole troop goes up. And by this time, the amount of broken necks is reasonably small. You also learn how to get wounded up a steep cliff. They make a ruddy mountain goat out of you down there. Some of the things they teach help you to get away with tricks which you think were impossible if you weren't in the know. Anyway, you find yourself doing all sorts of strong arm stunts that defy the law of gravity and make you feel like Samson. Whether it's a casualty, or a gun, or a case of spam, up it goes once you know the ropes. What goes up must come down. So we're going for abseiling, which has nothing to do with sailing, but comes from an Austrian mountaineer's word, meaning going down a cliff on a rope. At first, it looks difficult and thoroughly dangerous, but it isn't long before you're doing it with speed and confidence. You never use the stairs after this. Another lively pastime is a form of follow me leader, which includes jumping from rock to rock at a dizzy height, and with no nets to catch you if you slip. There's no time to admire the wonderful scenery, you've got to concentrate, or else. The whole course gives you a sense of balance and much more self-confidence than you ever thought you had. Did I say self-confidence? Why? Some of the wizards down there do the most extraordinary things and just for pleasure too. Well, that's what they do at St. Ives. You think you'll like it? Sounds pretty good to me. Can't get down there quick enough. Well, let's see if we get clean up. Yeah, yeah let's go and hang fine. Five minutes ago since you arrived here. Yes, and you've been since I've stiff here, has finished his training. I'm fit and well again. And we've all had leave. And now we're off. Yeah. All men on draft, get outside. Come on, move yourself. Nothing oh, worth my rucksack. Anywhere in the world, chum. That's us. Yes, anywhere in the world. Commanders are at home in any country. They meet in strange places. Over a glass of beer and a quiet continental cafe, maybe in the heart of the jungle, or in the snowy wastes of the north. There's not always an immediate plunge into the harsh realities of war, but perhaps a few days at a holding base, waiting for the word go. Here, there's time to relax, time to see the sights of an unfamiliar land. Time also to get to know a foreign town and the people who live in it. And the prettier, the better.
But in a forward area, these highly trained troops, used only for special operations, get billets when conditions allow. This is friendly soil, so there's a warm welcome awaiting the brothers of the Green Berry. Very friendly soil. The commander is a good ambassador. Barriers of language and custom don't exist. New friendships are formed. It doesn't matter if their landlord's name's unpronounceable, they'll soon be calling him Bill. story behind these men whose ancestors fought on the field of Agincourt. The idea was conceived in the dark days that followed Dunkirk. Determined to hit back, small groups of volunteers trained intensively for special operations. They carried the war into enemy territory, disorganized transport, destroyed vital installations, brought back prisoners and valuable information. Eventually, they became a highly specialized organization with their own strict code of discipline and an esprit de corps that was terrific. They hunted out the enemy and hit him hard. Their daring sorties across the channel were an inspiration and an unfailing source of hope to the oppressed peoples of the occupied countries. Their raids on vital positions seriously hampered the enemy's war effort and gave us time to prepare the final assault. The Green Berries made their mark on every war front. Their blood has enriched the soil of every country where the enemy was to be found. France, Holland, Germany, Italy, Greece, Burma, North Africa. We will never forget what they did for us, and the memory of those who did not return will remain forever imperishable. All honor to these brave men, brothers of the Green Berry, commandos. <laughs>